بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يضل الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له واشهد ان واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم Um, alhamdulillah, uh, my name is Hassan Prashij Mekani. Uh, I've been invited by Brother Hussein, a good friend of mine. We've been like that for a while now, alhamdulillah. We support each other with our da'wah. Um, alhamdulillah, I'm the Amir of a charity called One Da'wah. And um, alhamdulillah, I've been Muslim for about 14 years. Took shahad when I was about 16. Alhamdulillah, do the math. <laughs> Don't laugh. But alhamdulillah, um, and I'm Salafi. But don't run, because I'm not going to refute anybody unless you have a problem with this personality we're going to speak about today. Unless you have an issue with the personality that we're going to raise today. Inshallah. And I've been invited to uh, discuss some you know, comparisons between the, the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions of the, of, of the, the female companions of the Rasulullah compared to the Aishas and the, Aisha, no. what are they called? The Rihannas. The Rihannas and the, 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 the OG Nicki Minaj and all of these other personalities who don't even come close to comparison. They don't even come close. So it, it, when I was, I was going to start researching into well, what did she say and what's her statements of kufr, what's her statements of shirk, what did she say that is batil, but I don't think you need that. I think for me to come and tell you about one, just one of the sahabiyat, just one true, pure, proper example of a woman, of a real woman, a real sahabiyat is more than enough. You can make the comparison yourself. You can see that, that that is what it's about, and this ain't what it's about. I don't need to break that down for you. So I'm just going to discuss something about our sister, our mother, excuse me, Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, among the best women who ever lived. If you want an example about how to be a woman, how to be a, a, a female a, a portion of the community. If the brothers want to know what to look for in a wife, if they want to know how to raise their daughters, if they want to know the example of a woman to call to when it's big dawah, then this is the example that you need to know. There's nothing, it doesn't get better than this. It doesn't get better than this woman who we're going to talk about today. And inshallah ta'ala, I can do her justice, which is quite unlikely, in according to her scale of great deeds and magnificent benefit to the ummah. May Allah reward her. Now, uh, first let me just explain why they called the, the mother of the believers, why the wives of the Prophet called the mothers of the believers. She your mom? She give birth to you? She breastfeed? No, she ain't. Why? Because Because it's a term of veneration. It means no one can marry them. You can't marry your mother, right? Never could anyone marry the wives of the Prophet after he uh, passed away. You can't marry them. You have to respect them. You have to uh, venerate them. And you have to honor them, just like you honor your mother. And there's no Muslim except that the wives of the Prophet وسلم, is his or her mother. Sir? Now. And there's so many benefits that we can take from Aisha. Anha. Even just her lineage. Her father was who? Abu Bakr Siddiq. The best friend of the Prophet. The best person asked from, from the, the companions. The first Khalifa after the, the Rasulullah. She was his daughter. That's already status. These people that half of the sisters out here are trying to look like, shave off half your head and paint the other side red to be like, who's there? Who's, who's, who's 
their lineage? What's so great, what's so great about this person? This woman, she was the daughter of Abu Bakr, the Salir. And so one of the qualities that she said, one of the, her qualities is that in itself. She said, it's narrated in Sahih Bukhari, I don't remember except that my parents were in the religion. Meaning I don't ever know Kufr. I don't know Kufr. I was born into Islam and I've never known Shirk and Kuf in my house. She said, and there wouldn't be a day that would reach us except that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam would come and visit us. Not only has she been born upon Islam, not known Kuf, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam would come to her house daily. Already this is a, a cultivation that is far supersedes anyone else. Her description, Imam Adab, he said, and I don't know any woman of the Prophet وسلم, other than, or any woman in the world for that matter, who was more knowledgeable than her. And she was known to be very attractive, uh, fair complexion with some redness, until she got the nickname uh, Humaira, like the red one. She was very attractive, mashallah. Who did she take knowledge from? Who, why, why is she, what, 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 what made her the person and the, 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 the personality that she is? Where did she study? What did she learn? Who did she learn from? She learned from the Imam of Imams, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You too can learn from the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by studying the hadith and the sunnah of the Rasul and the understanding of the Sahaba. You too can obtain or try to ease and benefit from what she used to benefit from. Rather than, and which is quite shameful, learning the lyrics of one of these kufar of women who promoting their kufar and their batil until you know it better than the Qur'an, a'udhu billah. As soon as the hit beat comes, you know the lyrics, you know the tune, you know when it came out, you know the tafsir behind it. You know who beat her up and what he got and how much days he got in jail. You know everything about it. But when it comes to the ayahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can't tell me one from the other, which one's abrogated, which one's not, what's the meaning behind it. SubhanAllah. And obviously she took knowledge from her father, Abu Bakr, and Umar radiallahu anhu, and Fatima radiallahu anha, and Sa'ad radiallahu anhu. She had knowledge around her. She was cultivated upon knowledge, upon examples, upon great examples. There's no way that this, uh, this, this was like a project born to succeed. There was no way it could go wrong. The prime example, from, from the birth to her maturity, prime example for the sisters, prime example for the brothers of what you should be seeking, inshallah ta'ala. And who narrated from her many people, we're not going to mention, many big scholars, big, big scholars that used to go and learn from her. She wasn't just some, any random. She used to learn, implement and teach. And if the sisters are not going to teach, then how are our younger generations going to benefit? As the brother mentioned, it, how do you need to be role models? This is about role models. This is the prime example of a role model that I want you to learn from and take home today. If you don't take anything, say today, I want to be like Aisha radiallahu anha, inshallah. Say today, oh, I want a wife like uh, Aisha who tries to be like Aisha radiallahu anha, inshallah. There is the issue of her slander which Allah freed her from. We're not going to mention it today. But it's a, a great story and there's a lot of benefits that come from that. Where someone of the people try to slander and usually if someone tries to slander our sisters it backfires it backfires and this it didn't backfire any bigger than this attempt and so this is another thing no doubt that Allah will protect you and your name and your honor if you go towards him in seeking khair and trying to please him 
You will end up in some scandals. Oh yeah, Father Ma told me that Holdo said that this one said, and you said, and you will be taken. Like, what? You weren't even there? Like, what? Huh? If you spend your time seeking khair and trying to be close to Allah, that's not going to be you. You're going to get caught. You're not going to get caught in these uh, wakila wakal kalam situations. In, in crazy retweet, re- retweets, oh, you got a tattoo. No, you never. The point is, Allah will protect your honor and your dignity. If you spend your time trying to be upon what Allah is pleased with. And it's simple maths, you don't need me to tell you this. But I'm going to set out the example for you so you know what it is, inshallah ta'ala. First and foremost, I want to mention this, and it's very, very important. Is that the marriage of Aisha radiallahu anha, it was, a, it was prophesied, it was, it was a prophecy. It wasn't like the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, with the Sahaba, he said, you know, I want to marry that woman. No, it wasn't like that. And this is why I mean when I say cultivated, a cultivated example for the sisters, a cultivated example for the brothers, from birth to uh, her, her, her passing away. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Aisha, I saw you in a dream three nights, I saw you in a dream for three nights. When the angel brought you to me in silk cloth and he said, here's your wife. And so I said, if this is from Allah, then he will cause it to come true. And the point I wanted to bring out of this, just a quick point, is that Alhamdulillah, the Rasulullah he married Aisha when she was young. And we make no excuses for it. And we don't try to, you know, Kufar comes and says, yeah, you're a Rasulullah, he married this woman at this age. I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, you know, look, you know, that time, I'm not making no excuses for it, no. Why not? Because for one, you can consider it arranged marriage. The consummation didn't take place until she was an older, mature woman. One. For two, this was prophesied by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing you got to say to counteract that. That's end of story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prophesied this for the Rasul. And then the Prophet he fulfilled what Allah ordained. It's as simple as that. I don't want to hear, oh yeah, if she was young, blah, blah, blah. Do you, if you want to make a point about age in this, let's make a point then. We'll say to you that we're not the same, first and foremost. <laughs> the Muslims are not like the Kuffar. Alhamdulillah, if we were to marry from our cousins, it's perfectly halal. But you would look like, oh, uh, oof, if alif, tak, tak. But then, if you want to dance with my wife, I'd slap you. <laughs> but you guys dance with each other's wives and it's all out of this normal. And kiss the other man's wife and all that, and it's all good. He sits there and watches and smiles. No, we're not like that. We're not like you. We're different. On top of that, subhanAllah. We're not like you. You guys marry each other in the mosque, in your church. Pastor Bill marries Reverend Tom. We're not like that. We're not like you. We don't do that type of stuff. That's not from our way. You guys get scandalized for pedophilia from your, your imams and your popes in your churches. It's on the news. It's not, we don't get down like that. We're different. So don't point the fingers at us. Rather, look at yourself. SubhanAllah. And we say to them, it's equal to the prophecy that Allah, the, the Rasul will marry Aisha is like. The prophecy of, of the test of when uh, Nabi Ibrahim السلام, was told to slaughter his son. It's prophesied by Allah. You're not going to say, why does he try to slaughter his son? He's a butcher. No, you're not going to say that. You're going to say, look, Allah told him, God told him to do it. So, and so we have many points that we don't need to bring out, but I'm just trying to say to you that, Alhamdulillah, the marriage took place and she was a young age, and we make no excuses for that. A clear love and precedence that she set. It was narrated by Amr, <laughs> radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet, sallallahu he deputed me to lead an army. And I came to him and I said, who is the most beloved person to you? Really, he's asking the, the Rasul because he wants to hear his own name. It's like he's saying, who do you love most, Ak? Ak, man, come on, man. He wants to hear his own name. 
So, the Prophet said, first thing, no hesitation. Aisha, radiallahu anh, Aisha. That's who I love most. And he said, no, 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 no. I mean among the men, among the men. Like, who do you love most? He said, then her father, Abu Bakr. He said, yeah, okay, after that. He said, then Umar ibn Khattab. He said, okay, after that. He's trying to hear his own name. But the point we're trying to bring to you is that the first name, no hesitation, was who? Aisha radiallahu anha. Why? We're going to bring you the examples of her. And if any of you say that you love Allah and you love the Rasul, then definitely you should be upon what the Rasul loves. Definitely you should seek what Allah, what the Rasul Allah, he loves too. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you truly love Allah, because many people can say, I love Allah, I love Islam, I love the deen, I love the Rasul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you truly love Allah, then follow the Rasul, follow the Sunnah, and then Allah will love you back and forgive you for your sins. So the, so the remedy, the, the, the ingredients are that you follow the Sunnah. The Sunnah of who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Sunnah of who? The companions. Among them is Aisha radiallahu anha. So if you really do love this deen and you get up and you wear your hijab and your abaya because you love Allah and the Rasul and you get up and you go and you search for wives because you love Allah and the Rasul and you want a pious wife then this is the example it doesn't get better than this otherwise you'll be contradicting yourself if you say you love Allah and the Rasul yet you're trying to imitate Beyonce and you're practicing uh, Nico and booty shape to do their weddings so that you can try to draw someone You'd be contradicting yourself if you take off your hijab and you know, paint your hair different colors to copy the kuffar. You'd be contradicting yourself if you uh, repeat the songs in a speech and the, and the, filthy, word, the filthy words and you, you can't get off the music of these people who are kuffar. You contradict yourself if you seek other women other than this example. If you stray from this example in what you're searching for, for the mother of your kids, you contradict yourself. Aisha radiallahu anha, the wife of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the wives of the last apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day they sent Fatima, the daughter of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to, the, to, uh, to go and speak to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so she came and she sought the permission of uh, Fatima came, she sought the permission of Aisha to get into the house and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was lying down, I'm paraphrasing by the way the Prophet was lying down and he gave permission to Fatima, his daughter. And she said, Very, the wives, your wives, your other wives, they sent me to you in order that you, um, you be fair and more equal in regards to Aisha. She, you know, she's get fair time. Be fair, you No, know, women, mashallah, we love you, but never happy, man. Alhamdulillah. I'm just saying. So Alhamdulillah, um, Aisha, so Aisha she said I kept quiet when I heard that. Because the wives now, they sent the daughter to the Rasul to complain about them, like their rights and this type of stuff. They're trying to say we need, we're not getting our rights, which they were, definitely. So Aisha said I kept quiet. Then after, uh, the, son, the Prophet said, Ya yeah, Fatima, oh my daughter, don't you love who I love? She said, yes, Rasulullah, of course I do. He said, then, he said, well, I love her. I love Aisha. So after hearing this, Fatima, she stood up, she knew what time it was, and she went from, she went uh, back to the wives, and she told them what the, what the Prophet said. And they, they, they basically, they, they got upset. And they said, that you, you weren't no good to us. You didn't help us. Go back and tell him what we said. Go back and reiterate. But Fatima said, no. By Allah, I'll never talk about him again, about this matter again. Just to emphasize the Rasul, he loved this person. And so he asked Fatima, don't you love who I love? Don't you love who I love? She said, yeah, I do. 
So when they were getting, when the other people were saying, the other ones were saying, look, come on, complain, get some, you know, make a point. She didn't, that's it, end of story. I love who Rasul loves, he loves her, end of story. I'm not getting involved. He loves her, and I love who he loves, so don't try to get me to get involved. Point being, you should love who the Prophet Sallallahu loves. And clearly, he loved Aisha radiallahu anh. And just to emphasize a little bit more, because we could go on for days about how much he loved her, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we're going to just keep it moving, inshallah. But just to emphasize again, that the people, Aisha radiallahu anha said, the people used to look forward to her days. They, she said, the people used to look forward for the days of my turn. So to send the gifts to Rasulullah in order to please him. Basically, the Muslims, they knew when the Rasulullah was going to Aisha's house, that's when they want to bring their gifts. I brought this, I brought that, but I'm waiting until he goes there because I know he's happy there, I know that's his favourite place, and I want to go and drop the gifts on him and boost up the happiness, and he's going to be happy with me, vice versa. It was clear, nobody was in doubt. And this was the example, this was the, the woman that Rasulullah saw something he loved. And he wasn't shy or, uh, you know, uh, hiding that fact. What about her superiority? What about it? The narrated by Hashim's father that the people used to send presents on the day that the Prophet was with Aisha, as we mentioned in another hadith. Aisha said, My companions, meaning my other wives, that the co wives, uh, gathered in the house of Umm Salama and she said O oh, Umm Salama by Allah the people will choose to send presents to you on the day the people choose to send presents on the day of Aisha's turn but we too we love presents just like Aisha does we like the presents too why you know they're always sending it on the day of uh, Aisha so that she gets them so you should tell Rasulullah to tell the people to send presents to him wherever he is, whoever's house he's at, send the presents. Why is it just Aisha? Is what they're trying to uh, 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 debate. Um Salam has said, and the Prophet said, um, he turned away from her. When she said that to the Rasul, sorry, Um Salam, um Salam said that to the Rasul, and he turned away from her when she tried to tell him this point. And then she tried to say it again, she tried to bring the point up again, and he turned away from her again. Basically she's saying, why well, don't tell your people, your friends, your companions, bring presents on our days too. When she told him, he ignored her. She told him again, he ignored her. Until she tried to tell him again, and the third time, he said, oh, Um Salama, don't trouble me by harming Aisha. By Allah, but for Allah, the divine inspiration never came to me while I was under any blanket of a woman except hers. I.e. the Wahi, the Quran come down to me never with anyone else except for when I was with Aisha. Don't stress me about that. Don't make me upset her. Because he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not taking, uh, buying into that argument that they're trying to bring. And what about her zeal, her passion, her love for the deen? What was that like? It was narrated by Anas on the day of the, on the day of the Battle of Uhud, where some of the people retreated and left. Some of the people they, they backed out and ran. I saw Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr, and Um Salem with their robes tucked up and their bangles and it, uh, so their ankles were showing running around with water skins big man run off big man with sword and choppers run off but Aisha 
is they running around with water trying to feed the Sahaba. What's that? Isn't that love for the deen? Isn't that love for the, for the da'wah? Isn't that love for the religion? And it's a shame, it's a fact. The sisters back this religion better than the brothers. The sisters that are on this deen and practicing this deen, they back it better than the brothers. SubhanAllah. The match is how many of them, the sisters went into their pockets and raised the funds to fix the roof, to get the carpet, to fix the member. The brothers just say, oh, where's the water not cold? Why is it not hot? Blah, 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 blah. The sisters are about this religion when they get on it. More so than the brothers. And this is a prime example. Men are running away. And women are there in the battlefield, ducking knives and swords to be feeding the Sahaba. May Allah reward them. It was narrated that Aisha Radulahana said, I requested the permission for the prophet of the Prophet to go to jihad. She wanted to go to jihad. If we say to the brothers, you want to go to jihad? But, uh, you know what, I've got to wait to sign on next week. I can't really make it. <laughs> All kinds of excuses. Oh, you know what, I've got this pain in my leg, it just came back yesterday. All kinds of shook business, all kinds of not ready to back it. Oh yeah, EDL around here, I can come and go back it. No, you know what, bro, I heard a flat on you, yeah? <laughs> it's not even the case right now, you get me? It's the land of the cook, you, me? you have to just stay in your house. Shook! Shook! But there was women, Aisha, she was saying, I want to go to jihad. I want to wreck for this thing. I want to take people out for the sake of Allah. Within the right conditions. Within the right conditions. Yeah. And the Prophet, said, the Prophet said to her, Your jihad is to perform hajj. It's enough for you to perform hajj. That's your jihad. She knew that, but she was on it. She was on this thing. Fi sabi lillah. How many of our sisters, you break a nail, you start crying? How many? Get hit with the miswag. Ah, he abused me. How many? Subhanallah. If it wasn't enough, Aisha radiallahu anha is of those who was given glad tidings of Jannah. That is enough. If I stopped here, that would be enough for all of you. That she was given the glad tidings of Jannah. That means that when we say her name, we say radiallahu anha. Allah is pleased with her and she was pleased with Allah. No one, you can't just say that about anyone. Not anyone can just have that status. Allah is pleased with you. You can't tell me Allah is pleased with you. If you're not from the Salaf, you can't say, you say Allah is pleased with you. You don't know. This was stated out clear in her lifetime. Allah is pleased with you. You're getting Jannah. That is more than enough example. We don't hear that being said about Beyonce or, or Shasha Fierce, whoever she is. We don't hear that being said about her, that Allah is pleased with you. Rather, Allah is angry with you for your barting and your falsehood and your misrepresentation of a woman. May Allah guide her. So, the fact that she's been given the glad tidings of Jannah. It, imp it indicates that she is the example of a woman that Allah is pleased with. If you are a Muslim and you want to be an example, you want to be a woman who Allah is pleased with, you have to follow her example. If you are an and you want to marry and have a mother of your kids who Allah is pleased with, you have to look to her example. And the proof of that is that was narrated from Abdurrahman ibn Qab ibn Malik. We narrated uh, from Aisha radiallahu anha. She said, I said, oh, oh Allah's messenger, which of your wives will be in paradise? And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, as for you, then you're going to be among them. And that's uh, authenticated by Adabi and agreed with.
Okay, we're gonna, due to time limitations, we're gonna slide through a couple of the points. For inshallah ta'ala, we will put uh, similar likewise talks up online on YouTube on various channels. Uh, One Dawa, Street to Deen, and uh, wherever else we're affiliated. So you can benefit from uh, examples of the Sahabiyat and the wives of the Rasul. But um, I'm just gonna summarize a bit, a bit quicker now, inshallah ta'ala. How about we talk about her uprightness and her piety? It was narrated, Ma'awiya radiallahu anhu, he sent to her a hundred thousand, you know, a hundred, like say a hundred thousand pounds to Aisha radiallahu anhu. And what did she do? She divided it with her co-wives. Divided it with her co-wives. Most sisters want to kill their co-wives. Let alone split a hundred thousand bags of them. She got that and she split it with them. She was fair, she was pious, she was upright, she wasn't hassid, she wasn't you know bad mind, she didn't have no wicked intentions. Oh yeah, I hope you, you, you drink it till you die of it. That she didn't have those harsh feelings that women have to each other. Why do you have that? I don't understand. Why? 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 Why do women can't just get along? Why can't women want good for each other? Why can't Muslims love each other for the sake of their deen? Haven't you heard the narration? Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let them love for their brother what they love for themselves. It's the same. If you truly believe in Allah in the last day, then you should. You have to love for your sister what you love for yourself. Why are they envious? Oh yeah, the sister's wearing makeup, her wudu don't count, so when their salah prays, she ain't gonna get no reward. Let's not say that until the end of the salah. Oh yeah, this sister, that sister. Why? Why is it like that? That's not, if you think that's the example of the Rasul and his wives, you're well wrong. You're well mistaken. That's what we get from living in this society. We're everyone for themselves. But we're not like that, we're different. We're Muslims and Muslimah. We love for each other what we love for ourselves. Why with the backbiting? Why with the enviousness? Why with the hasad? Why let those feelings enter you over your own sister? Don't you think we have enough problems as Muslims as it is? SubhanAllah. I'm not saying if you get 100 bags, go split with your co-wives. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that look, this is the example of the best of the best. And you need to measure yourself. How close or far are you from that? It said that Aisha radiallahu anha was one who fasted constantly. She was always fasting. On the days that was permissible for her to fast, she would fast. It wasn't just waiting till Ramadan, like, like us lot. Oh yeah, Ramadan's coming, I better just fast two days before getting to it. Mondays and Thursdays, here and there, she'd be doing the fasting of the Sunnah. When's the last time you fast? Be honest with yourself. It was said that Aisha radiallahu anha, she gave 20,000 dirham in charity while she still had patches in her own skirt. Her own clothes are torn and she's given away 20,000. She's not thinking about this life. Oh, let me get my Fendi hijab and my Gucci uh, stunners. She's not thinking about that. She's miskeen in her dress, but she's giving away wealth that people don't have, that she could happily enjoy. But her intention was the Akhirah. And if we focus on the Akhirah, it will change our, our personalities completely. 
if we had real uh, azod, real astonation, real want for the hereafter, it would change us. It would make us seek the pleasure of Allah rather than seeking the dunya. And all of us are in that trap. All of us get caught up in seeking the dunya. And that's why we're here, because we wanna we wanna leave the dunya and go towards Tawheed. Sir? There's some beautiful points about Aisha, but we really need to get uh, uh, towards the end. So I'm going to tell you uh, about her death. And reflect and ponder over this narration, because this, it can suffice the whole thing. It will suffice the whole uh, bag, the whole chapter of what I'm trying to say today. And make note of what Ibn Abbas, what he said in humility to our mother, Aisha. It was from Ibn Abi uh, Mulaika, from Dakwan, the servant of Aisha radiallahu anhu, who said that Ibn Abbas, he came and he wanted permission to come into the house because Aisha is sick, she's on her deathbed now. And so he asked for permission to come in because it was known that she was on the brink of death. And in her company was her nephew Abdullah ibn Abdul Rahman. So he, Abdullah, said, Here is Ibn Abbas. He's seeking permission to come outside. He's the best of your children. Hey, ibn Abbas is outside. He wants to come in. She said, I ain't trying to hear from Ibn Abbas today. Ibn Abbas, go and look at the tufts, the, 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 the seer of Ibn Abbas alone. You'll be amazed. She said to him, I don't want to see this guy, I don't want to, not today, not now, I'm not in the mood. And I know he's just going to come and try and praise me, and I'm not in the mood for praise right now. I don't, want to be, I, don't, I don't need to be praised. So he, Abdullah said, but he's a Qari, he's a, he's a reciter of the Qur'an, one of the best at that. And he's a jurist, he, he gives the rulings for the, for the people in the community. And the religion of Allah. So permit him to come in and greet you goodbye. Let him come and say his farewells to you. She said, okay, if you wish, let him enter. If you wish, let him enter. So he was permitted to come in. Ibn Abbas, he entered and he gave the salam. And then he, Ibn Abbas said, oh, mother of the believers, have glad tidings, for by Allah, the only thing that's between you and the removal of all difficulties and hardship from you and the meeting of your beloved uh, Muhammad and the companions it's just that your soul leaves your body I, you're there now you're there now, you've done it MashaAllah he's praising her Aisha Allah said Aisha Allah said what else, what else? What, is, is this what you came to say? what else do you need to say to me? so Ibn Abbas said you're the most beloved of all the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu And he never loved anything that it, he said that which it was good. He only loved good things. And you're the most beloved. He's gassing her up. And he said he doesn't love anything except that it was pure and good. And Allah had revealed and cleared your sins from the seven heavens. And there's no masjid on the earth. No masjid on the entire earth. Except that, that ayah that cleared your name will be recited in the days and the nights. And when you lost your necklace on the night of uh, Ab Abwa, so the Prophet, the Prophet and the companions, they had to stop and look for your necklace. And then we didn't find water after that. The ayat of Tayammum came down. And then that was a blessing, a benefit for all people. Can you imagine? In the desert. When you can't find water and you need to make wudu, what are you going to do? It was because of Aisha that the ayahs came down about tayammum, the dry wudu with the sand, and made it easier upon the, the nas, easier upon the, the, the people. It was because of her. So Ibn Abbas is reminding her of the care that she's been through and what she's done and her achievements and how, well, how pleased with her that the Rasulullah is. 
I said, so, so indeed, he said, you're blessed. She, Aisha, and what did she say in response to all of this? She said, oh, Ibn Abbas, leave me alone. Let, like, stop this praising. For uh, by Allah, I wish I was of those who were forgotten and unknown. I, I don't even really want to be known. I, don't, I, I didn't do all of that for the status. I didn't do it to be uh, 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 someone that is uh, uh, praised. I did it for Subhanallah. I did it because I want Jannah. And so, uh, and there's another word in, but we won't go into it. But the point is, this was on her deathbed. Ibn Abbas came, tried to praise her. She didn't want to know. Even though all of this stuff is true. And so she passed away on the year 57 Hijri. And in some narrations it said that she even died on the, uh, the 27th night of Ramadan, which some people consider to be later to Qadr. And the Ansar, they congregated. Basically, many people, they, they came together that night. And if you can imagine, if you've ever been to a mosque on the 27th night, you know it is rap. So anyone who dies on that night, the janazah is going to be massive. So in Medina, her janazah was a very, very big event. And Ubaid, Ubaid ibn Umayyah, he said, indeed anyone whom she was his mother, they were sorrow and sad that day. Anyone who is a Muslim, a true Muslim, then your mother is Aisha, then you should be sad about that event. They were sad about that event. That touched them. It touched them deeply. May Allah have mercy upon all the companions and those who follow them in good deeds, inshallah ta'ala. Just to summarize, sisters, brothers, I didn't get to cover a lot of the stuff that I wanted to cover, but I've said that enough for you to know. And I know you already know, that it's not about getting lost in this dunya. It's not get about getting confused about who you are and what you're trying to achieve and who you're trying to emulate and what your goals are and what your objectives are and how to achieve them and how to avoid them and how to stay away from bida and kufr and shirk and batil. You have to know these things. You have to implement it upon yourself. No one's going to force you and say, be a Muslim, be a Muslim. Follow the sun. No, no, we're not going to force you. No one's going to force you. You have to put it on yourself. Islam, especially in this country, is implemented upon oneself. If you leave the religion, we can't cut your head off. Or, 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 or if you steal, we can't cut your hand. You're implementing the deen upon yourself. And alhamdulillah, you do it to the best of your ability. But don't get confused. There's a lot of mind. Uh, uh, brainwashing going on out there. There's a lot of people getting caught up. Or oh, if I'm like Beyonce and Rihanna, these type of people, this person might be attracted to me, or might get a better status, or I might be looked upon with favour. But we say to you, you wouldn't trade diamonds for pearls. So then, why would you trade Jannah for the dunya? سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهدنا لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونعوذ بك